Ladies and gentlemen, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce, coming in at a beefy 48 pounds, 40 watts of punching power, the P515 from Team Yamaha. In the bottom of our table, the newcomer, the up and coming FP90X from Team Roland, coming in at 52 pounds and 60 watts of punching power with pure acoustic modeling. Today, we have the heavyweight champion for best digital keyboard. Stick around. Hi, this is Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate the support and we love to interact with you guys. Today, really excited, we have two flagships from two, I would say, two of the top manufacturers who make digital pianos here right in front of me. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison because kind of pricing dictates that these are kind of in different price categories, uh, but they are what these manufacturers, Yamaha and Roland, pose as their flagship model to their portable series. And so the P515 has been around almost, I think it's going up on five years now. So it's, it's been a staple of the industry for, here for a little bit and really kind of raised the bar of what that $1,500 to $2,000 price range can offer. Uh, I remember it was a very big deal having wood keys from Yamaha in a sub $2,000 instrument. Um, it's just not something that Yamaha had produced before. It, it does add a little bit to the weight, but a lot of people are willing to compromise on that. Um, it's just a great feeling. It's that NWX action, which had been in Clavinova series before and kind of worked its way down. And here it is all in a, in a portable series. So the P series starts off at the P45. Uh, there's the P125. And now there's the P515, which kind of took to the next level. It replaced the P255, which was also a, a, a favorite, but they did a pretty big price jump. And they're like, look, this is the 515. It's an incredible instrument. Uh, at the time, they put in uh, what was new technology for them, the binaural sample that uh, it's, if you put on headphones, it, it sounds exactly like you're sitting in front of their nine foot concert grand, the CFX from Yamaha. So that nine foot concert grand is here inside the P515 and if you put on headphones you hear that binaural sample. They put a mannequin, uh, basically a crash dummy right in front of the piano where, where the, your microphones would be, where your ears would be, and they pick up what the room sounds like and that's your best sample that you're going to get on the P515. Really just an incredible value on an instrument. 40 watts of power like we said in the introduction uh, that's going to be 20 watts aside, 15 um, 15 by two speakers on each side and then a five watt tweeter on each side as well. So a real nicely developed sound, enough to fill a room, enough to take this as monitors if you're playing a gig. Um, great outputs on it, just an incredible package. Um, that I think it really shines in the pianos, in the electric pianos. Of course you have organs, strings, other voices like that. Um, there is, you know, they have all their MIDI instruments as well that are, that are in there, Bluetooth audio just kind of what the standard has been for the last five years, um, because it is five years old, but no need to change it. It's a, it's a very amazing product offering, especially at the price point, $14.99. But then this year, Roland said, okay, well, hold on, we have something to offer on our top of the line, um, which is the FP series, which has been loved for a very long time from Roland. The FP series starts at the FP30, goes up to the FP60, and right here is our flagship, the FP90. X is that new addition. Um, the X was announced at the NAMM show here in 2021. It was one of the big announcements, especially in the keyboard side of things, um, in a year where there wasn't just a lot of announcements of new products because of obviously what 2020 had for us in store. Um, but really excited that Roland was able to bring out something that really kind of raises the bar, I would say. Um, again, it's, it's one of, when we look back in, in another five years from now, we look back, we're like, well, Roland kind of set the standard for the last five years. I think we're going to be talking about the FP90X uh, as, as one of those. And so the FP90X offers something I think that's really incredible. And we've done a video on this. Um, hopefully you guys have checked it out. It's, it's our, our take on modeling versus sampling. And Ted and I in that video kind of discussed technology in the piano world, in the digital piano world, and where it's gone for the last 30 to 40 years. Um, 
And Roland, who's always been big in the synthesizer game, especially in the 70s and 80s, and what they were able to create and synthetically and with, uh, with modeling systems, they've been able to continue that. And because technology is where it is today, and we have insane computing power that can fire off algorithms in a matter of, you know, closer, you know, milliseconds, milliseconds, you know. Um, but what it has is a complete modeling system, the pure acoustic sound, which Roland has kind of said, this is the future of, of piano, piano sounds. And I'm, I'm trying not to say sample because it's not a sample. Um, so when you have the Yamaha, you have that CFX sample, you have that Bosendorfer sample, which are their two flagship acoustic grands. They're nine foot CFX, which we just talked about, but they also have that nine foot Bosendorfer, Bosendorfer Imperial Grand, um, Yamaha owns Bosendorfer, the company, um, and so they brought all that, put it in their flagship P-series, P515. Roland, on the other hand, has created a completely new instrument that requires no sample. So they never mic'd a piano up and said, this is what our piano is going to sound like on this Roland. Um, they actually mic'd up a whole bunch of pianos and studied sound waves and what the attack was on it and what the hammer sounded like and what the strings sound like and what the resonance sounds like. And they created a model. They basically created AI or created VR for a piano and created the whole thing from the ground up, which is a much more painstakingly, um, I would just say it's, it's an incredible accomplishment to create something like the pure acoustic modeling system that's in the FP90X, which was not in the FP series before, but it was in, in uh, Roland's top of the line LP series. So in those really expensive, you know, like the Clavinova series for Yamaha, the LP series for Roland is um, a much more highly priced uh, offering. It's more of an in-home or for studios or for school districts. They've taken that pure acoustic modeling that everyone was really loving and that school districts asked for because it's just it's something completely different and they bring it here for the first time in the fp series the fp90x and so really that's the huge difference between these two you also do get the ph50 um, action on the roland fp90x the, that's going to be their wood key action with escapement and with let off uh, really kind of a hybrid action when you when you look at portables that when people start using that word hybrid it's it's simulating an acoustic action um, but these two are incredible feeling on the and, and we're going to play them here in a second but on the p series there has been people who said and you can read it on the forums uh, this isn't me I, i'm not i i love the p515 it's one of my favorite instruments i love the es920 from Kawhi as well and that's one that we're going to we're going to compare against these two when we have them here. Um, this last year has been hard to get them in stock. But people have said about the action on the, on the Yamaha that it's a little bit heavier than your normal digital piano actions. And they, they kind of, that's one of those things that you'll start reading. Okay, what about this action? Why does the NWX, why are people saying that it's a heavier action? Um, and if, with weights and things like that, they've actually weighed it out. And it's, it's a little bit above what a grand piano's action would weigh. Um, again, there are ways to change the touch velocity on both of these instruments so you can make it feel like it's a softer action, make it feel like it's a harder action, and that has to do with the trigger of the sample. Um, but both incredible feeling actions. The key tops are gonna be very different between these two. That is something I wanted to bring up um, just with playing them. The Yamahas feel, and for lack of a better term, a little bit more plasticky. Um, you get a little bit more of that sticking feeling on your fingers when you are playing it. The uh, FP90X is kind of, they, they do an ivory simulator basically, and so the ivory kind of, you know, it, it feels a little bit more like you can flow on it a little bit better. Again, I would recommend trying these two. Um, that is just my personal opinion, but um, there is a little bit more of a stick on the, the P515. Um, there is a big price jump though when you move up to FP90. So this is a $2,200 instrument, this is a $1,500 instrument. Uh, I think at official, the map price is the $2,199 on the FP90X. Does have some cool features that the P515 does not have a mic input. So if you are needing, you know, this is a kind of a perfect gigging instrument. If you play at coffee shops, if you play in smaller venues, you can take a microphone, plug it into the back. It has a mic control over there on the right side if you are playing it. Has a three band EQ. So if you want to tweak some sounds on the go, that is a really cool feature pump the mids a little bit if you you know just want a little bit louder fuller sound um, great electric pianos on here um, i i really enjoy the layout of the fp90x just because it's kind of makes a little bit more sense to me um, that being said both of these instruments have digital apps that work with both of them and so you can use a, a full controller 
if that makes more sense to you. If you want to Bluetooth control the MIDI on the Roland, um, it's, it's just, it makes it a lot easier to use Roland's control apps or Yamaha's control apps to control the sounds and work with the piano room on the Yamaha, for example. The P515 has a piano room where you can kind of make micro adjustments to the sound of the CFX or of the Bosendorf where you can, you can close the lid, you can, uh, you can change you know, the touch feature like we talked about, you can change the resonance. There's something called virtual resonance modeling on the P515, so that's them using modeling like we had talked about on the Roland, but for the, the surroundings around the piano. So the sample is that pure acoustic, a pure acoustic sound that's actually sampled with a microphone. On this, it's called pure acoustic modeling, and that's them creating it. So a little bit more variety that you can change on the FP90 um, as far as changing the sounds and the individual parameters that make your piano sound what it is. There are two main sounds on the FP90X, the American and the European sound, and both of those, because they're fully modeled, have unlimited polyphony, which is kind of mind-blowing. Mind um, this kind of the industry standard on a higher-end keyboard like this is a 256-note polyphony. The P515 has that 256-note polyphony. Because this is a fully modeled sound on the FP90X, that pure acoustic engine, that is going to be an unlimited polyphony. So no, nothing's going to hold it back from ever stopping and playing um, because it, it's not playing a sample. It's actually creating every time you hit a note, it's creating that as a different algorithm that's firing off. So just really cool. But let's listen to them and let's see if we can hear the differences. Um, I know there's going to be a, a feel difference, not only because the actions are going to be a little bit different when the weighting comes to it, when the weight of the action comes to it, but the actual uh, key tops and uh, the ebony key tops as well are going to be different between the two. So let's take a listen. Let's hear mainly the piano sounds is what I wanted to focus on here because that is, to me, the biggest difference. And the person who's going to be spending this amount of money on a portable really knows that they're looking for a high-end piano sound. Uh, we're also going to look at those electric pianos because I think those are kind of the two, the two categories where both of these shine. So let's take a listen. Oh, oh one last thing on the FP90X, 60 watts of power. So a little bit extra power. Um, again, it's a, a four-speaker system where on your right channel and left channel, you're going to have, um, what is it, 25 watts on, per side and then 5 watts per tweeter per side. Um, so, you know, a little bit more mature sound, a little bit louder, um, but, you know, very, very close and comparable to the 40 watts and the 60 watts there. So let's take a listen and uh, listen to the samples between both of these samples and models.
Both of these play and sound great. I don't think there is a wrong answer here. And I know at the beginning we were, we were posing this as a, as a fight, as a duel, but really because of that price point, I think they're both winners. And I know that's the, you know, the everyone gets a, a participation medal, but really I think there's a big enough price jump that says, yes, this is $600 better than the, the P515. So if you are looking to spend a little bit extra, I would say definitely check out the FP90X. Um, it's really cool to listen to the sample when you, and I keep saying sample, but the sample on the P515, when you strike a chord and you listen to the decay, and then when you play the FP90 and you strike a chord and you listen to the decay of the modeling, there's a difference there. And uh, in, this, in, our, in our demo, I wanted, to, I wanted to play that for you guys so that you did hear how it decays and dies down. Just in the nature of sampling, what they do is they have to take a sample and they try to make it as long as they can so they can get a fully developed sound but then they have to loop back around and use decay from that original sample. Um, so depending on how, how long you hold it, that decay is gonna sound a little bit like a loop. Um, and so see if you guys could pick up on that. It's very, very, uh, it's hard to notice, but once you start listening for it, you can kind of hear the difference between a sampling and a modeling. Um, and so just great sounding instruments. I really, again, I don't think there's a winner here. I think they both have a lot to, to offer. And if, when you're spending this amount of money, a lot of things come into to account if you're looking for the lighter weight. P515, again, comes in at about 48 pounds. This is four pounds heavier. I know every pound matters, especially if you're taking, if you're lugging this thing to gigs or to church, um, putting it on stage. If you're a choir teacher and you're like, hey, I need to be able to carry this around. We're going to tour all the nursing homes and all the schools to sing Christmas carols. Um, I think you have to take into account all that um, recording capability. Both of them kind of have recording and playback. Um, they also both have some features where you can add on to voicing. I really like the EQ and the mic input on the FP90. Um, both of them also have Bluetooth audio in. So if that is something that um, is important to you, if you want to be able to play this as a sound system, say it's going to have its home in your home studio or your bedroom or in your living room, this can actually turn into a 40 watt 40 watts of power speaker system, it's gonna sound very developed, and this one can turn into a 60 watt speaker system that's also gonna sound very, very nice. Um, so it just makes it a lot more fun to play both of these. Um, again, outputs, are, you're gonna be pretty standard on these. You're gonna have left, right, outs. You're gonna have MIDI in and out. Um, and then you're gonna have the capability to use different pedals on it. Um, both of them come with the upgraded pedals from their lines, um, which is a full kind of piano simulated uh, pedal. The FP90X has the, has the option to add in that three pedal unit as well. Um, and actually, yeah, the P515 has a three pedal unit that you can upgrade to as well. Um, so really great instruments. And again, I don't think there's a winner, but I do think there is a battle of which one is gonna outsell the other and which one people are gonna love here five, 10 years in the future. Um, and, I, and I'm curious to see if Yamaha is going to stick with the P515 for the next couple of years, because again, I don't think it's lacking anything. It, that's, that's one of the most incredible things. It's, it's an incredible offering that was released five years ago, and it's still going to last five to 10 years if you buy one today. And, and that's kind of what's cool about Yamaha. What's cool about Roland is they continue to innovate, but they're not making their, their past products obsolete. They're actually just enhancing features and, and really trying to strive to create something that's going to last a long time and that's going to help a player grow, help a student grow. Um, and I really think of both of these as, as winners. So good job, Roland. Good job, Yamaha. Make sure you subscribe because we are going to be looking at the Kawai ES920 when we do have more of those in stock. They have been out, out of stock for a little bit. Um, very popular Kawai offering, kind of in this price point. It plays in uh, a little bit more expensive than this and less expensive than the FP90X. So if you haven't checked that out, we have a P515 versus an ES920 video um, and see if you can tell the difference between those two and, and you have a preference between those because we are going to bring that in and we're going to do a battle of all three or maybe just a battle of the FP90X versus the ES920. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can check out that video when it comes out. But thank you guys for watching and checking out, um, checking out the video. Again, we're Alamo Music Center and we're in San Antonio, Texas. We did just open up a store in St. Louis. So if you're in any part of, you know, I think that's right. In, in Texas, you know, St. Louis and all the other states are just right there in the middle. No, but it's, it's right there. And if you're closer to St. Louis, make sure you stop by and say hello. We've got some nice people there. Check out our website, alamomusic.com. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We have a chat agent available. You can also give us a call. And if you've played either of these, please leave some comments for other people. Let them know, hey, I've had a P515 for years. I love it. 
I'm not even interested in upgrading or I've had it for a couple years. I'm looking to get the next step and I'm going to try out the FP90X. Let everyone know what you've tried, what you love about it, what you maybe don't love about it because all that information is very valuable to, to everyone who's watching this video. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music. Thanks for watching.